Welcome back to my channel guys and in today's video we are going to be talking about the craziness of the logistics world. The logistics world right now is absolutely broken and it is an important subject to talk about. We're also going to be speaking about what you can expect from sourcing from China right now just before Chinese New Year and also after Chinese New Year. This video is from the Sell It Sessions podcast where I am a co-host on and I interviewed Ken Golzari, who is a very good friend of mine and also has a YouTube channel called Sourcing with Ken. And Rafael Albaz, another good friend of mine, who is the CEO of Unicargo. So the three of us will be talking about these subjects. And it's, I think, very important, especially if you're selling on Amazon. But in general, if you're just sourcing, it's really important that you know what it actually looks like right now to import into America or just to export out of China and just to get products from one place to another. Sea shipping right now is crazy expensive. Air shipping right now has gone back to normal, but if you sell on Amazon, currently there's limitations and you're probably going to need a 3PL. All of this we cover, we get into the nitty gritty side of it. Just before we get into it, if you're new here, my name is Sharon Evan and I am a seven figure Amazon FBA seller. I'm also a mother, I'm a wife, I'm an entrepreneur, and I also do one on one coaching with Amazon sellers. I also help people to find and source products through my product research and sourcing course. I will put a link for that down below. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Welcome to Seller Sessions. I'm your host today, Sharon Evan. And today I have with me the one and only Kian from Sourcing with Kian and Raphael from Unicargo. Welcome, guys. Thanks for being hey, on. Guys. Hey, Sharon, what's up? Thanks for having me. This is like the uh, ultimate situation for me because we're all really good friends, the three of us. So it's, uh, it's really awesome. Uh, I'm sure that everyone knows you both. Uh, Ken, you've been on this podcast like probably a trillion times, but for the people that don't know you, can you just give us a brief intro? Sure, yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? Good to be back on Seller Sessions. Um, Danny, hope to see you again soon as well. <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Ken Gozari. I've been living and working in China for the past 10 years. And um, in that time, I've manufactured over 2,500 products, visited more than 500 factories, and attended more than 20 Canton fairs. That has led me to work for a lot of different brands, licenses, uh, retailers, and also help Amazon private label sellers uh, as well. I've got a YouTube channel, Sourcing with Kian, Facebook group of the same name. Happy to talk anything, sourcing product development, and all that fun stuff. Thanks, Kian. And Rafael, for the people who don't know you, which is nobody yeah. in my group because everyone knows you in my in my town. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so hey, hey everybody, great to be here. Um, I'm Rafael, CEO of Unicargo. Um, basically, I've been dealing with uh, freight forwarding for Amazon sellers since, I don't know, the past six, seven years. Um, been there, done that, touched almost every possible scenario an Amazon seller can encounter with the logistics. Um, I, I, I would say I've been involved in over a hundred thousand shipments, you know, going to Amazon in the past year. So just seen it all and always happy to talk and, you know, discuss these topics because that's what I do. Cool. So today I usually before, um, I mean, you guys know I, I'm a YouTuber, so I'm not used to podcasting, so I'm getting used to it. But usually I will make a list of questions and today I will, we're all freestyling because we all, this is like such a difficult subject in general, especially for people who are actively selling and sourcing. Um, so we're gonna freestyle it today. So today's main topic, we're gonna talk about number one, China and what's going on in China just before New Year, uh, Chinese New Year, et cetera. And then we're gonna get into, I called it uh, the, I said logistics is broken. And then we have here, uh, Jacob said, it's not broken, it's just different. Uh, <laughs> it's debatable, it is different, it is different. Yeah. But uh, it, to me, it's also definitely broken. There's a lot of things going on and, and Rafael uh, will definitely get more into that as well. So let's dive in. I, I, relate, that, I relate to the broken side of things, yeah. I, I, I really relate to the broken side of things uh, as well. I've got some people here who's just saying hello. Stuart's here with the tacos, hey Stuart. Yara is here like always, hello, and so is Joanne. Hello to everyone. So I thought that what we could start off with um, is first of all talking about what's happening in China right now. 
um, with uh, you know the virus starting to sort of come back and all sorts of things. So Kian, let's give us an update of all sorts of things that are going on in China and also just before Chinese New Year. Cool, cool. Yeah, let's jump into it. So I think um, when we think of China, right, it's important to know that China is not a one size fits all policy. It's a massive country, right? And every province is different. Every province is sort of governed by itself as well. So just consider that if we talk about, you know, what's going on in China right now, it doesn't necessarily mean that what's going on directly applies to you. Each province will be entirely different because we've seen that there's been like local lockdowns going on in China in the last sort of few weeks, but that's been mainly in the north and the south hasn't been greatly affected. Also uh, in the middle of China, in like the Zhejiang province, they've tried to restrict um, production of factories because they, they're trying to restrict with lockdowns and stuff like that. And they've done that by switching off the power, switching off the electricity in some factories just so that they can't produce. Uh, and that's happened to a number of my factories as well. So wow. there are there have been local lockdowns. And the crazy thing about th these local lockdowns, right? The whole world is, is having it, right? But it causes panic at a time where they're just about to go into the biggest people migration in the world. Over 100 million people travel over Chinese New Year. And for those of you who don't know, Chinese New Year is on the 12th of February, uh, so not too far away. But because of that, they're going to go on holiday about a week before. So in the next few days, beginning of February is when we're going to see people um, travel back to go back home. However, they don't want millions of people jumping on trains, spreading the virus, which is exactly how it spread this time last year during Chinese New Year. So they've tried to restrict that by pe putting people in lockdowns. And then as a result, people are now worried that, okay, I can't go home for New Year. I can't see my kids because bear in mind, a lot of people travel to work in these areas and their children are raised uh, by their parents, um, by the children's grandparents. So they're like, this is the one month of the year where I get to see my kids and I might not be able to go home. So now they're like, okay, screw this. I'm just leaving the factory now and I'm just going to jump on a train while I can before it gets crazy before Chinese New Year. So now like the factories that I've been talking to have just got workers leaving left, right and center. And that's no way that you can plan your orders and complete your production and things like that. So me personally, I've had a lot of my delivery dates affected and factories saying, hey, I know we promised you before Chinese New Year, but it's just not possible. Your orders are going to be after Chinese New Year now. So I think, you know, anyone listening, if you are expecting an order to go out before Chinese New Year, just double, triple check that, check in with your manufacturer every day, make sure they're still on schedule. Uh, because if you haven't heard from them, you know, you might get a bit of a surprise. Um, so, and that that's greatly affected our production. But as I said, it's a case by case situation by different provinces. So, so best to check in on that. The other thing is that, you know, Raphael's going to talk about shortly about the whole logistics situation. Um, but the prices have been going up recently in the last few weeks in China. And not only because of the logistics situation, because, you know, if you're shipping DDP, then that your price includes the logistics. But exchange rates um, has the Chinese RMB has strengthened a lot. I think it's been about 8% um, in the last few months. And I'm not a financial, I'm not a Forex expert, but from what I read into it, it's because the, um, the Chinese economy strengthened and went back to normal before anyone else during this vi um, virus situation. So they were able to get their economy pumping again and going. And as a result, their, um, their RMB currency strengthened. And how that affects us is that now Chinese goods are more expensive to purchase or sorry, the supplier makes less money on every US dollar uh, that they receive. So I think right now the rate is like $1 is like 6.4 something RMB. But just a few months ago, $1 was 7.1 RMB. So it's a difference of almost like 10%. So if you pay your factory $50,000 for a PO a few months ago, and then $50,000 today, they're making, you know, about $5,000 less and they pass just because on the exchange rate they have to exchange those us dollars into rmb and because of that they then pass that over back onto us to um, increase our prices now there's a few things you can do to get around that um a lot of suppliers like to have bank accounts outside of china as well because a lot of them don't like to keep all of their wealth inside china so uh, you can also ask your manufacturer look do you have a us dollar bank account do you have a hong kong bank account that i could pay there and some of my suppliers do have that so i've been um you know using that also the other thing is you can say is to split the cost 50 50 as well yes the exchange rate has gone eight percent in your favor however we can't afford more expensive goods in a market which is very saturated so can we agree on four percent and just split the cost like 50 50 or if you have been doing business with china for a long time 
in end of 2018 was the reverse situation where the the dollar strengthened and they were actually making uh, a lot more money uh, and they never told us about it and never passed on a discount. So you can go on a website called xe.com and that allows you to monitor the exchange rate historically and you can graph it. So if you go on there and, and look at your purchase orders or look at your payments to your factories and see when you place them, any orders that you placed in 2018, just click when you go to xe.com, click on charts, find the date of when you um, when you paid your suppliers like previous orders, and then um, just check co compare that to the um, rate it is today, and then just say, hey, um, we never asked for a discount um, when it was in in our favor, so we don't expect you know to to pay more at this time. And then just they're like, oh, he knows about this stuff, so they get a bit surprised. So th those are a few things you can do to to get around it. But yeah, th that that's basically the 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 summary of China. Um, you know, factories are expected to go back to work around, sorry, the offices are expected to go back to work around 20th of February. Factories, we're not sure. If I was to give you an exact date, I would have to bring my crystal ball out because we don't know what the travel situation will be. If there'll be lockdowns, when people go back home, will they be allowed to travel back to the factories? So we would envision, hopefully, end of February, beginning of March, but anything can change in the meantime. But we'll be keeping a, a close eye on it and, and we'll keep you guys posted. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's about China right now. I we were talking just before this, and I was telling you that I'm being very careful what I'm saying this time around because last time, last year, this time when just before Chinese New Year came and the pandemic just started, it wasn't even a pandemic yet; it was just inside of of China. It hadn't even you know become what it is today. I was. I was like, oh, you know, this and this will happen. And everything I said didn't happen. And also you, you we, we all said all sorts of things. So we're being careful what we're saying. But I spoke to my suppliers and I got the dates that they're um, going to officially close down on the 6th, but they're already at um, less than half capacity now on the 6th of February and opened it back up on the 20th of February. Um, Ken, um, Stephen's asking if you're still in Dubai and you are still in Dubai. So, oops, I just uh, yeah. bring that back up. Yeah, so, Stephen, I'm, I'm still here. They've not kicked me out yet. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So um, Stephen also said lockdowns are affecting supply of raw materials, etc. cetera. Um, uh, for example, steel, which has delayed one of our shipments. And Cy B, who is on every single podcast and is really awesome, says, hi, guys, COVID lockdown in the, how do you pronounce that area, Kian? Uh, Hubei. <laughs> Hubei region stopped all track movements for 10 days. They are open again since Tuesday. So um, before we get into the whole logistics side of things, Rafael, which a lot of um, the headache is also actually in America, not just in China. There's also a whole headache there. What is your take on what's going on right now in China and your experience from the freight forwarder side and what you're seeing through clients as well? Yeah, well, Chinese New Year was what is, you know, logistics, Logistics wise is one of the most challenging times of the year, you know, none without COVID, you know, so with COVID it's even harder. Um, let's let's keep COVID aside, you know, every year, like a week, two weeks before Chinese New Year, before the actual holiday, we see, um, you know, huge lines. For example, if you have an, a less than container load, you know, where you have to, to get your cargo into a bonded warehouse to get consolidated in a, in a, in a container. Right now, as of today, you know, in, in Shenzhen, the, the, the wait in line to get the cargo in is about 24 hours, all right? Which means with, when the driver comes in, he has to sit 24 hours in, until he can hand over the freight. In Shanghai, Ningbo, east of China, we're talking about 48 to 72, 72 hours. 48 to 72 hours with the wow. driver sitting in his truck for, for three days and waiting to, get the, get to, to, to deliver the goods to the bonded warehouse. Um, so that's the situation right now. As, as somebody mentioned here, um, a lot of the raw materials, the raw materials that are coming out of the north are just shut down. So we've seen a lot of, of our client products, you know, suppliers just saying, hey, we are sorry, but the cargo is not going to be ready. We just want, don't have the raw material to finish the production and it's going to wait until after the Chinese New Year. Um, container wise in China, we are seeing like the worst situation we've ever seen before, like China's ever seen before as far as equipment. You know, they just mm. don't have empty containers. It's just crazy. It's becoming very, very hard to actually get an empty container when you ship full container loads. Um, so what, what happens is the book, the shipping line will give you a booking, right? The shipping line will give you what they call an SO shipping order. 
which means you have uh, you have a receipt that you can have your trucker go to the shipping line to the dockyard and try to pull a container but when they go in they just don't have an empty container what happens is because of the backlogs in in the states and the backlogs in europe because the the virus is hitting very hard there containers are just not getting unloaded they are sitting on vessels waiting to be unloaded they are sitting on chassis because the 3pls are bursting out and they don't have space to unload those containers and basically empty containers are, are not not coming coming back to china so there is the severe shortage of container like it's the worst it's ever been like ever um you know rates are going through the roof like triple the, the usual rates for full container loads um and not just that you, today you'll pay five thousand six thousand dollars for a container and if you want to guarantee a container you add up another you know a premium fee uh and that will only give you a booking and a container but nobody give you no there is no certainty that you know you'll be on that vessel a lot of these containers are get rolled over to the next week and sometimes for two weeks ahead uh, and then you can pay another premium fee what they call a diamond booking add another two thousand dollar and you'll be a guaranteed but then you're looking at you know seven thousand eight thousand dollars for a container and that's main ports if you're going into inland like um chicago dallas kansas stuff like that you'll you're coming almost to ten thousand dollars a container which is insane just insane um so situation is is that, that's china side right u.s side <laughs> um Long Beach has just been a mess for the past, I would say, almost three months now. Um, they just don't have the manpower to unload the vessels. They just, just, you know, truckers are not coming in for work. A lot of these people are just scared because, you know, there's a huge, huge, huge um, infection rate. People just get sick. And a lot of these people who, you know, just just afraid going to work, they just sit at home and stay at home and they say, hey, it's not worth it you know our, our salary just doesn't worth it and they just prefer sitting at home which means there's no equipment there's no there, there are no drivers so prices are going up um and it's just it's just a mess all right it, it's just a mess we have we are seeing containers sitting at the ports because there are no drivers to pick them up and you know shipping line don't care you still pay your detentions you still pay your demurrage which means like storage because you, you don't if you don't pick up the container you're gonna pay storage right um <laughs> it's 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 a it's a headache it's a big 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 headache a lot of people i've seen a lot of people lose their pants you know in that q4 you know in the past q4 it's just it just it's just crazy i've seen really i've seen people lose their businesses because they, yeah. they make out to Q4, you know, some of these sellers are, you know, the, the Q4 is their biggest selling season. You know, some of these products are really seasonal products where, you know, if you don't have Q4, you basically lost your whole year. And yeah. and they, they didn't plan that out. Nobody knew that's going to be, that's, you know, that's worse. And to be honest, right now out of LA, we're looking at about almost 50 vessels waiting to be unloaded just sitting there and waiting to be unloaded and it's just you know it's not it's not gonna get better it, it, it'll take it'll take some time until we will get back to normal nobody knows when it's gonna be um but yeah we just gotta sit tight and on on the amazon side of things because of all of these restrictions now everyone's also now needing 3pls which wasn't i mean everyone's always needed warehousing and 3pls i mean you guys at unicargo have always um, had that option but now everyone like almost every single seller needs a 3pl so there's also a huge shortage in in room and space now yeah. for 3pls which is crazy i know a lot of people you and i rafael did a video like during last year about it and then many people are telling me sharon like there's no 3pls and i'm like I don't have any more for you. You know, there's, it's so difficult to find. I've heard that, you know, people are, are funny and weird. Me and you did a video on 3PL and then and talked about pricing and how the pricing structure work and how does it work, you know, in the 3PL. And I don't know, a month later, I told you, hey, we are fighting down. Don't, we can't get any people because we are, we are, we are losing it's, it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird and it sucks, but, you know, that's, 
that's the situation right now. We are still don't we, we still don't accept any new clients to to three PL because PLs. and UK three PLs are it's a mess. You know they don't have the manpower. They don't have the manpower. Europe is even worse than the US. They just don't have the manpower, and it's scary. So if we try and think of um, how our Amazon sellers or e-commerce business owners today are supposed to handle this situation. Uh, if we try and think of of tips um, as well, I mean, a, a lot of the people um, listening on seller sessions are already experienced sellers. Is also the newer sellers, but mostly experienced sellers. Today specifically, um, I mean, we, we were just talking about it. Somebody here said, also Stephen said here that, I'm trying to bring it up if it'll show, that his, he's got um, a container that to the UK at 14 Yeah, yeah, pounds. 14, yeah. For four fourteen thousand pounds. Four months ago, it was two thousand pounds. It's like yeah. seven times higher. Sea shipping in general, so being, so, but it's also a lot higher also to the US, not just to the UK. How much is yeah. it times but more? UK, UK, is, UK is the worst I've ever been. UK is the worst. It's even worse than the US. US is about two to three times more, and UK mm -hmm. is seven and eight times more. Wow. And, yeah, people are crying out. Also to Israel, imports to Israel. It's all over the world. You know, people are crying out. It's all over the news. Importers need to raise their prices now. And, you know, the consumer is going to pay it eventually, right? Um, yeah. But it's tough. It's really tough. Yeah. Yeah, Sharon, uh, you would mentioned, um, you know, what the Amazon sellers and e-commerce guys can do right now because uh, obviously it's a very, very tough situation. One of the things I've been recommending is obviously with the freight prices being so high, it's not profitable for certain products and for certain people to ship their products at the moment but i would start sort of telling people to utilize their manufacturers storage as well because quite a lot of these factories do have their own warehousing and they do have their own sort of space um depending if they're a factory or a trading company but even trading companies will have connections as well to say hey guys look it's far too expensive at the moment to ship products out you know that you can see that and um, can we hold and obviously ship what you need because you don't want to go out of stock um ship what you need maybe if like you've made like ten thousand goods maybe ship like 20 30 percent of it and then keep the rest in your factory's warehouse and if we anticipate that shipping costs will go down no one really knows but if they do go down after chinese new year maybe march april then ship out the remainder then um and the other thing you can do as well is that similar to what i said about the exchange rates about splitting that cost with the factory that's also something i've done with the shipping costs with my factories as well to say hey look freight rates have doubled, tripled, quadrupled, whatever. Um, that's a cost that I have to burden. And if I don't ship these goods, then I'm not going to make any sales. If I don't get any sales, you're not going to get more orders. So if you want, let's split the increase of the freight cost 50, 50, I'll cover half of it. You cover half of it and we'll get these goods out and we'll ship it and we'll sell more and we'll get more orders, uh, for after Chinese new year. And they've been quite open about that as well. And that kind of goes back to stuff I've talked about before in terms of working in partnership with your factory, because they want to see you win so that they win as well. So if you explain it in a way, like, rather than saying hey give me four thousand dollars for this container just say explain it in a way that hey if i don't ship it i'm not going to make as many sales and you're you're not going to get as many orders so let's work together here and uh, i've had some success doing that as well that's an interesting perspective actually yeah. yeah i think that it makes sense for people who have a good relationship with their suppliers which is what you were saying which is very very important and also um you know someone who's got history with with their suppliers as well because I don't, you know, a newbie can't come and say that. Yeah, right? yeah, don't, a, newbie, a newbie, a newbie, don't even try and say that because everybody is basically going to say, you know, if all. But I'll ignore you and delete you. Yeah. <laughs> Toby said that's great advice, Ken. However, everyone is trying to store at the factories and now they're starting to burst at the seams. I was going to say that too. That well, um, Warehouse is in China also, you know, if you have a freight uh, yeah. order, has warehouses is in China and it's pretty cheap to keep storage there. Um, So that's another way to utilize uh, storage in China. Ask your freight order. Yeah, so Raphael will just mention this because we're um, we're all either in lockdown or, or at home. So Raphael's currently in quarantine because I um, okay. myself in it's, yeah. it's all good, I know. Quarantine, so he has to be at home and he's got three kids and three kids, right? Under the age of three four. Boys. Three, yeah. three boys girls. under the age of four. He's stuck at home. Um Kian was King. <laughs> 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 you are single, that's true, but 
kid also was in um, quarantine. Uh, you're out now of quarantine, though, thank God. Yeah, I'm and freezing a bit. You're freezing a bit in Dubai. And then I'm in lockdown, so I'm not in quarantine, but I'm in lockdown. And I've been in, both Rafael and I are in lockdown because we're in Israel, but we've been in lockdown for ages. I just noticed that all three of us are in the Middle East, which is pretty cool right now. Yeah. But anyway, um, so that's why you may hear some screaming in the background, but it is what it is because it's life dynamic and we're all, we're all, you know, dealing with this stuff. I think that, um, I, I think it's difficult to predict whether pricing is going to go down or if it's usually in general, there's like this golden time where prices always go up before mm -hmm. COVID or not COVID when it comes to freight forwarding for shipping specifically towards, um, Chinese new year. And oh, usually yeah, yeah before Chinese New Year, before COVID. And also there's a period of time where they go up, um, well, they stay up also a little bit after Chinese New Year as well. And then they usually even out. We just don't know what's going to happen this well, year. Uh, nobody knows, but again, by the market sentiment, it doesn't look like it's going to go down in March or April. Because, you know, yeah. the, the, the situation is still going to be crazy, right? The US is still going to be crazy. It's still going to get... Con still going to be congested like crazy. You know, empty containers are not going to get back to normal in China. So, again, nobody knows, but I assume by looking at what's happening now, I assume March, April still going to see going to be the same. Crazy high rates, uh, lots of problems. And someone said in, in, in the beginning that logistics is not broken. It's different. That's, a, you know, that's, that's true. a perspective. It's a different reality. And, you, you again, as an entrepreneur, you have to adjust yourself. You have no other, time. you just have to adjust. So either you find that creation, either you find that creative ideas, that creative solutions. Um, you know, a lot of people were asking on Facebook, how can we get our our stuff, our cargo faster? If LA is such, you know, so in, is in such a big problem and it's so congested, what can we do? Um, so there are other things to do, like you can try and reroute your shipments through different ports. Um, if you're working in, in, you know, if you're getting your fulfillment centers, all your three fields in the West Coast, you can try Seattle port. The last, the, the last mile, the actual trucking from port to the three fields is going to be much more expensive, right? But again, you got to budget your, you got to, you got to sit with yourself and see what's more important. Is it timing, speed of, you know, transit time, the faster transit time or your budget? So it, it's, it's very, um, it's very individual, you know, every business has its own priority. Some of these businesses will sell, you know, very high volume sales, sells like thousands of units a month or thousands of units a day. And, you know, add up $3,000, $4,000 to Hiroshima, they, they, they don't care because they, they make more money when they have stock. And as Kian mentioned, if you have a lower margin product, you just, you just can't do it, right? So it's all about adjustment. You have to adjust yourself to the new situation and, and embrace it because we, it's here to stay for at least the next couple of months, at least. Yeah. Go for it, Tian. Oh, yeah, Rafa, I was going to ask you a question, right? You know, we have this like container shortage. I was thinking, like, surely the solution is just to manufacture more containers. Do you know, like, what the process is there? Like, how long it takes to make a container? Is it easy? Is it crazy expensive? Like, and I, why know, you know, I know that chassis um, yeah. are manufactured like and the contracts are closed for the next four years now everybody is fully booked with manufacturer i would just assume container manufacturing is the same thing because mm -hmm. everybody knows about the situation so you know everybody's trying to manufacture the equipment and they're all working full capacity and, but it's just not good enough you know it just takes a lot of time it's not it, it's it's they're, they're working on it i know they're working on it but from what i hear everything is like all production line are fully stocked fully booked for the next three, four years, um, because people know about the situation, because people see what's going on in the world and, and shipping line and trucking companies, they just need that equipment. So they just try to buy as much as they can. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, sorry. Go for it, Ken. Go for it, go for it. Well, I was going to say, you know, we've talked a lot about like sea freight, but how's the situation with like air freight? Is that in a like similar? I was just going to ask it. I was going to say that. Um, for some people, it may make a lot more sense to do air freight or even air express right now more than to. I mean, obviously, depending on on the yeah, the depending size. on the size and volume of the ship. Hmm. But yeah, air freight surprisingly, air freight um, was very very high. If you remember during you know uh, April, May, June, 
uh, July, August, but somewhere September, October, November, prices went back to normal. Um, mm -hmm. really went back to normal, but now we are seeing a spike again, but that's a usual spike before the, uh, for the Chinese New Year. Um, air freight are pretty much, I don't know how, but they are back to capacity. So freight, re, freight, air freight rates were back to normal in the past two months. Now it's higher because of Chinese New Year, but I expect air freight rates to come back to normal around March, April, uh, which is a good thing. Um, it's a good thing. Yeah, and in terms of like prices of products, well, because we're talking about pricing of freight, uh, if I can mention a little bit about price of products um, as well, I, I envision that we don't know when, but I think the price of products will come down because they are artificially high at the moment because of the exchange rate situation that we mentioned. But what's interesting is that China historically, whenever the currency gets too powerful, they deliberately devalue it because it greatly affects their export market. And export is absolutely massive for China, as you know. But as their um, RMB currency strengthens, their export becomes less popular. So they always control that. And I, I do think that they might um, weaken their currency uh, after Chinese New Year if their exports have been greatly affected. Um, the other thing you can do as well is that uh, something I always like to do at, at the start of the year or the start of the Chinese year is uh, give my supplier like a forecast order. So depending on like how often you, you place your orders, you know, you might do like two or 3000 units like every two or three months. But I look at how many units I'm going to place like over the course of the year. And I would just say, look, I'm going to give you a forecast. And remember, a forecast is not a commitment. You're just envisioning how many you're going to order. And say, based on last year's sales, we did 10,000. I think this year we'll probably do like 13,000. So if you can go ahead and place the order for the raw materials for 13,000 units and keep them in your factory, um, we'll give you the deposit for the raw materials and then we'll just pay you for the orders as they ship out. And this is great because you've secured your pricing at that price when they've just ordered all the bulk material. And then they always have your materials in stock as well. So you almost cut your lead times in half from like 60 days to 30 days. But again, going back to what I was saying before, this is only really like if you have a good relationship with your manufacturer, you have a bit of trust built up, you've ordered several times, you've orders have been growing, then they're more inclined to do something like this for you. If it's just your first or second order, you probably won't get this, but it's still a good exercise to sort of forecast how many units you'll order that year and have a discussion with your manufacturer to see how they can support you. Uh, this year. Um, so yeah, those are just a couple of things to be mindful on uh, on the price of the products. By the way, that's a very good idea. By the way, we do it with shipping as well, but only for, you know, higher volumes, like you have 20, 30, 40 containers a month, you can budget that and, you know, plan ahead with your freight forward, get fixed pricing on a contract rate um, and get the same methodology on, on shipping as well. So yeah, Nicholas here asked, what are the fixed costs? I'm thinking pickup fee, export clearance, paperwork fee, one-time custom bond on a shipment from China to the US. That's a good question. Um, I'm guessing you're talking about sea freight shipments. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the pickup fee depends on how where your factory is located, you know, how far is it from the port. So if it's like 200 kilometers from the port, it's going to be a different fee than if it's like, you know, half, a, half, a minute, half an hour drive from the port. So. Pickup fee again. If your supply is located in the major areas, looking at around, and again, it really depends on the volume you have. Looking at around 100, 150 bucks uh, for the truck. Export custom clearance is around 50, 60 dollars. Paperwork 20, 30 dollars. You're looking at around 200, 300 dollars for an LCL shipment, less than a container load. Um, if you're talking about full container loads, you're looking at around 900 dollars. $800, again, depends on what port of exit or port of loading you, you're looking at and uh, the distance from your supplier to the actual port. Um, but yeah, LCL is different, full container loads are different. Obviously, if you're going to have 20 CBM or you're going to have 3 CBM, they'll affect the price as well. Um, so there is no one answer to that. It really depends on the type of shipment, the size of your shipment, um, location of your supplier, etc., etc. A good question would be also, um, you know, Rafael, we were seeing in, in the, at least in the Alpha group um, that, and also people were experiencing that they weren't able to um, get stock out of their 3PLs and into Amazon for many different reasons 
for for example also you guys were having difficult well not you but sam frank we, had, well, we, had, we had major difficulties on in november december what happened is you know three pls were minning up and preparing for q4 like they always do but most of the three pls and we had we made that mistake as well i gotta admit it we never accounted for what's gonna happen with with amazon restrictions so for example if you as a seller you know, you come in Q4 and you want to stock up in Amazon, you make an order, you, you take out, I don't know, five, six, seven pallets, you prepare your order, and uh, one order, what hap what, but what happened with the, with the restrictions that now you cannot send those four, five, 500 units, 600 units, 700 units, because Amazon is restricting you. So 3PLs got, instead of one order, they got five, six, seven orders from a client, and multiply that by hundreds and hundreds of clients, you're now getting thousands of unexpected orders and you'll just backlog like hell add to that west coast most of the 3pl um in workers the actual people packing orders and shipping orders are from mexico right they close mm. the borders due to covid 19. so no manpower almost to pack orders and a lot of the our warehouses a lot of and i'm sure other warehouses as well because that's that's the business environment that we lived in we had a lot of people infected, you know, so if you have a person infected in the, in the, in the warehouse, now you got to close the warehouse. You got to shut down. Everybody's got to get tested now, wait till they get the results. And only then you can open the, the, the 3PL. And we, we have four locations in, in, in the, in, in LA. And during the past, during November, December, we had five, six times that our 3PL was shut, shutting down, like closed. You know, our com clients come to us and, hey, I want to ship my order, but the 3PL is closed. And we were in a very, very bad situation. And I literally couldn't sleep at night because I knew I was killing people's businesses. And I I still want to cry when I talk about it because that's, you know me, you know how important okay. my name and the reputation I've built uh, around the years. And and when people started, you know, getting really mad and, and, and I feel really bad and you really can't really do anything, right? The three people is shut and you have thousands of order now and no people to, to, to pack them. We flew people from here, from Israel. We flew people from Israel to, to stay there and, and, and we had people there for a month. Like we, we actually flew a team and it yeah. was, it was, a uh, was it, you, you know, I was very active in social media. I just. I disappeared in the past four or five months because we were working like crazy. It's, it's crazy. I think it's, I know you um, very well and you guys, I use your services and have been for, for a very long time. And um, I, I think it's important to hear the freight forwarders speak. And I think it's important for people to hear it from your side as well, because People don't understand that there's a, so many different, also in China with, with factories, there's so many different aspects and, um, you know, moving parts when it comes to the supply chain and when it comes to also to, to logistics that people like, well, you know, they haven't answered me or this hasn't happened for three weeks or this. And I'm like, yeah. I get it. I understand we're all going through it, but, you know, and it sounds like excuses, but it's not, it's just, logistics is all over the world it's not just in the us it's not just it's not in the work, uk it's not work, it's all working. over it's, it's working different. very differently and like you said like we just have to adjust to the current situation i think that like there is light at the end of the tunnel at some stage things yeah. will get better it's just that right now specifically also it's even worse because chinese new year and everyone is you know we just got um a small shipment in right now uh you you know because we did it through your guys. We just got a small shipment in quickly just before Chinese New Year so that, you know, we could drip, we could, um, like that we wouldn't go out of stock basically for, for one of our things. And that's another thing, actually, it's a good question to ask. I've had people recently say to me, oh, I really, I'm trying to get this and this done before Chinese New Year. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what freight port is going to pick up your stuff in the next two days? Are you guys still picking up right now, Rafael? Well, for Pick up, pick up costs are, you know, double than triple now in China because, you know, as Ken said, a lot of these uh, employees in China are already go off to, their, off to their holiday. You know, most yeah. of them, not most of them, but at least Many. half of the people in China, the workers in China are already on the way to their home because uh, they were, um, sometimes it takes, you know, 
because it's the biggest migration in the world, migration of people, it takes a lot of time. It takes them a week because it's just all crowded and overloaded with people. So people go like seven days, sometimes 10 days before they actually they go to their hometown. Um, so we pick up goods, but if you have goods uh, ready and if you can change your income term, it's better if you have FOB terms. Have your supplier be in charge of getting the product to the port because a lot of the times it'll be very, very expensive. Right now, instead of 100 bucks, it can cost you 500 bucks. Instead of 200 bucks, it costs you 800 bucks because there are no drivers and prices are picking up because they have to stay so long at the ports. Um, but Air Freight is moving out. Um, Air Express is moving out. Uh, Steel Freight is moving out, but not for long. Yeah, there's like, what, two days left? No. Maybe uh, no, it's not included in the weekend. I have it. I have it here. I wrote it down. Um, see, air cutoff is tenth of tenth of February. So by until tenth of February, you can still get our cargo out of air by by uh, by uh, out of China by air. Courier Air Express also tenth of February. Um, sea freight eleven of February. Seventh um, of February. Um, so you still have time. You still have at least at least another week, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a bit more complicated, obviously, and and it's not guaranteed. All right, some of these truckers, you know, if you buy an Xworks, and some of these truckers will sit there for seventy two hours, and they'll just give up and go and and turn around, and and it also happens. So nothing is guaranteed. That's the big problem. Saibi said, it's time to diversify, stop buying from China and start baking cakes and carving wooden spoons. Yeah. You know, um, um, the, yeah. I, I, as you guys were talking and Raphael was saying about the biggest people migration in the world, I just had a thought to be like, all right, well, what's the biggest animal migration in the world? And I was Googling that. Can anyone <laughs> guess what's the biggest animal migration in the world, right? So the result I got is the Arctic terns, and this is in terms of distance, right? It says Arctic terns hold the record for the longest annual migration recorded by any animal moving between Greenland and Antarctica in a zigzag route. The bird covers 44,000 miles a year. Fun I was just going to say yeah. birds. I was going to say yeah. it has to be, it's a type of bird. Um, uh, I had I a question. I had a question about China. And, and I, I just completely that. disrupted your thought pattern. You, you, just, you, 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 got me, you got me thinking about birds now. It's but, a very um, important piece of information. Very important it's very piece valuable. Of information. Yeah. Uh, wow. Um, Nicholas is a really long question here, which will probably hide Rafael's face. So I'm just going to quickly bring it up. When you ship LCL, what can the freight forwarder do and not do to save on your cost when consolidating shipments? For instance, could they consolidate before the export clearance to spread this clearance cost on several clients? Import goods under their own yearly custom loan, they were uh, and sort of hacks, or is it impossible in which case why for an argument on Facebook with qualifying water you know, on cheaper freighters? Uh, all right. It's a very good question and a complicated question. Shipping out of China less than container loads, there are I would say today there are about eight to ten different consolidated products. When I say consolidated products, I mean you have a full container load going directly to Amazon, all right, to many different uh, Amazon routes. For example, FTW1 was one of the, is one of the biggest uh, Amazon locations. We as a company and many other freight forwarding company in China has a direct consolidation, which means if you have two CBM, we can pick up your cargo, put it in our container with many other different clients, and that container goes directly to FTW1. ONT8 has that container, uh, SMF3 has that container, TEB6, Many big Amazon warehouses, we have direct containers going into that route. Um, that's one type of consolidation. Another type of consolidation is a container that goes to an LA-based warehouse, unloads the container, and then shipped by UPS. Uh, that's what they call uh, C plus UPS. They have all many all different kinds of name for it. Um, there's a con the consolidated gets unloaded and um, delivered by a trucking companies. Uh, there are fast services that, you know, faster boats and faster vessels that goes and distributed with UPS or FedEx. That's uh, C Express, what they call it. There's DDP, DDU. There's so many products out there. And I, I get it. It's very, very confusing for, you know, a, a regular Amazon seller. So 
the ways to save money is if you are going into a consolidated container, what's happened is that you're going to pay export for your own goods, right? For exporting out of China, you got to pay pickup for your own goods because you pick it, the, the freight forwarder picks up your own goods. But what happens is once it good, gets con consolidated, the vessel leaves and the container gets imported under the freight forwarder's bond, all right? And it's get, it, the, the cost gets split by everybody in that container. The sea freight gets split by everybody in that container. Um, the trucking cost, you know, to get the container from the port to the to the warehouse gets split. Um, so everything from departure, from ocean, from sea freight up to delivery, everything gets split. And the, the reason you are getting quote five hundred dollars by Chinese freight forwarder on Facebook and a thousand dollars from uh, Freitas is that on Freitas we sell on Freitas as well. We are uh, a very we are very active on Freitas as well. And on Freitos, you get there is a very very harsh feedback system. So if you and and people will slash you, people will kill you. And those consolidated services, they are very, they are a lot of them are unreliable. You know, it takes time. You know, you have you gotta consolidate everybody. You have to custom clear so many goods together. It's it's not as stable as a regular traditional LCL where I take where I take only your cargo ship it out, custom clear your own cargo, and I take, I have responsibility for all the, the, the chain, from pickup until delivery, uh, it's done specifically for you, and it's obviously more expensive. So on Freitas, we also sell only LCL shipments, and we don't sell consolidated shipments because these products are slower, these products are less controllable, and people will just slash you on Freitas with the, with the feedback, with the reviews. That's why- When you say- when you say products, you mean service, like yeah, you mean yeah, yeah. Your, your services. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for me, it's products, yeah. But yeah. It's shipping services. So that's yeah. why I'm afraid of, that's why I'm afraid of, it's more expensive because people, freight forwarders don't usually sell consolidated services on freight of, because people will kill them on, 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 on the reviews, all right? A lot of, most of the people buying on freight of are unexperienced, you know, shipper, unexperienced uh, sellers yeah. and, you know, if they get delayed, they don't care. They'll just give you one star review, and then your sales on Freitas will uh, will drop. And you gotta be very, very efficient, very, very um, good on Freitas. That's why it's more expensive. I think what stood out to me was the fact that um, Nicholas always also said that why is a freight forwarder who contacted me on Facebook? You gotta be really, really careful when trusting a random freight forwarder. Um, Rafael, you said it the other day in, in the Alpha Group. And you said you got to remember that any you know any average Joe, especially in China, can just put up a website or just you know uh, uh, give a service on Alibaba, pay I think two thousand, three thousand dollars to be a gold supplier, and say, hey, I'm a freight forwarder. Um, yeah, a lot of, a lot, uh, what I said is a lot of a lot of the courses and mentors teach people to find the freight forwarder on Alibaba, and that's scary because on alibaba yeah. you and me can go on alibaba and become a gold supplier tomorrow pay a thousand five hundred you know fifteen hundred dollars for a year and you are a gold supplier on alibaba put some pictures there any random guy can pick up your cargo and then help you you know ask for ransom and and we've seen it in your group i don't know yesterday that someone yeah. asked from, from somebody fifteen hundred dollars for storage for three days in china and yeah. <laughs> and and it's, it's you got to be really, really careful. Uh, I can say it from my experience and and through living through other people's products as well. You got to be really careful who you trust when it comes to to shipping, and you have to be very. The reason that Rafael also said that you, it, it, I think I have so much to say. <laughs> I think that number one, right now, and right now, like the the logistics world that we're living in, you got to be really careful who you trust with your cargo. That's number one. And that's why I think the same way that Ken preaches um, a relationship with your supplier, let's not forget that having a relationship with your freight forwarder is also extremely important. How many times has Rafael saved me or Unicargo specifically saved me or saved other people? Not just that, people that have built a, a, a relationship with their ship, shipping company that's you know I think it's just as important as building a relationship with your with your supplier. Stop, stop, stop pitching Unicargo, then it will kill me. 
<laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not. I said, I said, not just Unicargo. You know, it's not just Unicargo in general. I think that also it's not something that is spoken about um, as enough. No, I'm not talking about Unicargo specifically. I'm talking about building a relationship with your with your freight forwarder as well, or even with your even if it's just your three PL. Because when shit happens, good luck trying to. And I'm not bringing down specifically, you know, Chinese uh, freight forwarders, but good luck finding someone who's going to care about your stock and help you. And I think that right now is a very, very important time to make sure that you're, you're working on that type of relationship as well. To have, to have somebody on the other line, you know, on the other side yeah. of the line, you can actually call somebody. You can actually call, call speak to them. Yeah. And I think that it's, it's really, really, um, it's really dangerous to just go on a Facebook group and say, Hey, can someone recommend a freight forwarder? First of all, who the hell do you like? Who do you know the person who's recommending? <laughs> I, got, I, got freight forwarder? That. I gotta talk about you know, that. It's, it's such a. I it's got such it. A, I, sorry, Sharon. I got it's it's killing me, and I get every single day. It's killing me. Everybody who recommends on Facebook is a fake profile. Every single person that you know, you see these posts. Hey, please recommend a freight forwarder. And you see uh, this recommends this, and this recommend himself, and this recommend this, and. And 90% of them are fake profiles, paid advertising, promoting themselves. Be careful of that. Look who you look, go into their profiles, you know, try to talk to them. It's crazy. Most of them are Chinese. Yeah. I, I don't have nothing against Chinese. I have very good friends, Chinese. My biggest business partner is Chinese and I love her, but be careful. They have, they have a different business ethics. That's for sure. I think also something that um, is important to say about Nicholas's question about how can I one person give me one price and another person give me another price. There's also a lot of dodgy things when it comes to logistics that uh, usually, specifically, Chinese freight forwarders will do. But in general, a lot of um, a lot of you know, pretending the different HS code in order to not pay tariffs and all sorts of, of dodgy things. And you've got to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. I think it's very important. Um, as well but as we start to wrap it up and we want to give a little bit of hope to people because you know like like we said logistics is currently broken and it's important to understand what's currently happening but there is light at the end of the tunnel and it's not going to be forever it's it's for right now and the thing is i don't really think that life is ever going to go back to normal i think that it's it's just going to be different and life in general right this is my my the way i look at the world today after COVID, I don't think it's going to go specifically back to normal. I think it's going to be different. And I think that part of being an entrepreneur and being a business owner is you just have to adjust. You can't sit around and cry about it. You just have to find, you know, diversify and you have to pivot and you have to find different ways to do things. And you know what? For some people, it may make more sense right now to source locally. Straight up. It may. It may make sense for some people now to source in America specifically or to source in the UK specifically and not, you know, go outside of China, not for all products, uh, obviously, but for some people it could make sense. Um, yeah. Does, do you guys anyone have any last thoughts before we start to, to wrap yeah. it up? No. But, I mean, as you said, things are going to get back to a different normal, but a, a bit different normal, but, I really expect things to get much better in 2021. Um, I would say hopefully May, June, we'll start seeing things ease up a bit and, you know, starting to get into um, the, the, the rates we are more familiar with and, and the, the, the equipment availability that we are, are used to in China and the efficiency for in China. Hopefully in, in, in May, June, it'll go back to normal. But yeah, it just... You gotta be positive, right? That's that's being an entrepreneur. Look at the bright side. Find the, the right way of doing things and adjusting your business and yourself. Cool. Thank you for that, Rafael. Ken, do you have any last words for us before we? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I would say, like you know, let's let's look at the positives because um, it's not all doom and gloom. You know, we're all in this together. In that, okay, logistics is affected, which means anyone who ships anything is affected. It's not like it's just affecting your business; it's also affecting your competition. So there are other ways to add value to your customers, other ways to get sales. Um, so let's just try and figure that out. Because I always feel like entrepreneurs get paid to solve problems, and we're in an issue here. Now let's figure it out, like you know, how we get out of it. Um, 
But yeah, w one other thing, which is, I guess, is a positive, is that I feel that uh, with Biden coming into office, he's definitely going to reduce the tariffs in which Trump imposed on Chinese goods. So we can see that Chinese goods will start to become a little bit cheaper uh, because of the tariff situation. However, I was... I, I was thinking that he would do it like quite soon as he got into office, but I read some things that he said he was going to delay it. He was going to think about it. He was going to review his China strategy, use this as leverage a little bit. So I don't think it'll be anytime soon, but I think in the next few months, we'll start to see uh, Chinese tariffs uh, come down. So some goods might become more, uh, more of a big opportunity now when those tariffs come down. And uh, I'm personally going to look into the opportunity of manufacturing containers now that I know there's such a shortage. <laughs> I've got some connections. So I think I'll have a new business pretty soon. Oh, and said, I'm not a fake and I'm not Chinese, but I do often recommend companies I deal with. But Rafael is right. Do check out early recommendations. So obviously, Rafael didn't mean that everyone is a fake. He was just saying that there are a lot of fake uh, companies out there and not everyone is, of course. Right, Rafael? That's what you meant. Not a fake company is a fake recommendation. Yeah, uh, yeah fake, which, which is not everyone. That's not true. You know, I recommend you guys all the time. Everyone. So, yeah, <laughs> no, not everyone. He's joking. He's joking. He's joking. Uh, Nicholas asked, Kian, with the freight cost increase and the pandemic, are you trying to source more products in the US or Europe directly? Um, no. Not really, right? <laughs> because, and, and, and here's why, right? Because there are certain products that I only source from other countries. I source in countries which specialize in that type of product and a country specializes in a product based on the raw materials that they have access to. So for example, example, I do buy some products from India and stuff from India. India is like cotton and canvas and leather and those types of products because that's what they're strong for. Uh, and also because India is part of the Commonwealth, UK is part of the Commonwealth, so there's no import duty from India into the UK. So those are reasons why I would ship from other countries, but I wouldn't ship from another country just because the price has maybe gone up in China or lockdowns in China, because there's lockdowns in other parts of the Everywhere. world as well. And, and the final thing is that like, what China gives you apart from is, apart from like the workforce and skilled labor and like things like that is it to give you scale you know like what other country in the world can man if you need ten thousand of something made in one month what other country in the world can do that for you so like maybe if you want to do like some handcraft products or you're starting out maybe potentially look at other countries but if you want to get into big business like china is definitely the place to be i 100 percent agree with that and the chinese I government should actually pay me i do a lot of promotion for china you do. I was just going to say that you that uh, I, that's why I straight away said that your answer to that would be no, just so for a little bit of, of, of fun. Of <laughs> oh, yeah. fun. Cybc, thanks guys. Great show. I'm off to do some baking and carving. <laughs> I have to say that um, I did recently get a lot of people send me messages and say that they're freaking out. Um, some of it was political, which I'm not going to get into, but and start asking me, you know, does it make sense to to source? Um, we also on Clubhouse were asked these questions as well, Ken, when we when we hosted a room. Does it make sense to, to source locally, just like how Nicholas said, um, products in the US and Europe? I think your answer is perfect, and I agree with it 100%. It really needs to, it needs to make sense. And I think that lately, personally, I've had a lot of Americans specifically reach out to me and say that they want to start, you know, getting, finding local um, suppliers. And that's, a really good thing that you just said like good luck finding a local supplier that's going to be able to get you speed to market wise 10,000 units because you know something that could take <coughs> sorry three weeks it's just say in China may take three months you know in, in America as well and one other thing to remember is last year I know that I said on my YouTube channel I said you know am I am I going to get out of China right now well you know no because of many different reasons. And then also little did we know that it was going to turn into, you know, an epidemic and it was going to be worldwide. And it's something important to remember that maybe you want it tomorrow. I'll be honest, I don't know what the situation is like in Mexico. I'm just using this in, as a as an uh, example. Maybe you're like, well, instead I'm going to get my leather products from Mexico and then tomorrow Mexico goes into full lockdown, you know? So the whole world's in, in, in this kind of situation. Yeah, the whole world's also unpredictable. Probably the only country that's predictable is New Zealand right now, but um, which is where I was born and grew up and kind of miss it right now. Anyway, Stephen said, great content. Logistics doesn't get discussed enough, so this is refreshing. Yaro said, thanks, guys. Um, so, uh, Kian, if anyone wants to reach you or meet you or see you or whatever, where do they find you? Um, you can take a flight to, to Dubai and we can hang out. <laughs> <laughs> No, with seriousness, if they want to find you, where can someone contact you? 
Yeah, for sure. Um, so YouTube and Facebook, I've got a group, got a channel, um, Sourcing with Kian, the name of both of them. I'm also on Instagram, Kian underscore JG. And uh, yeah, you feel free to reach out. And you're also on Clubhouse. I'm on Clubhouse, yeah. I'm enjoying it at the moment, actually. We're having some good sessions in there. I wonder how long it's going to take for you to be a celebrity on, on uh, like hardcore celebrity on, on Clubhouse. Uh, <laughs> Rafael, uh, who I don't know if is on Clubhouse yet, needs to be. Rafael, if anyone wants to contact you, where can they find you and get in touch with you? These days, um, find me on Facebook, I, I would say. Find me on Facebook, send me a message, and we'll take it from there. I'm going to say also that they could email you at rafael at unicargo.com. <laughs> and they could, and Rafael is spelled R E F A E L, not like other people spell Rafael. Um, yeah. And also, me, if anyone wants to contact me, you can also see my YouTube channel, Sharon Evan. Thank you, everyone, today. And thank you for Danny for allowing us all to be here and have an awesome day. Thanks, Bye, Danny. Guys. Thanks, guys.